another Oregon transfer, and Cardozo getting ready. And you see the height advantage over Mackenzie Holmes, and we are underway. South Carolina, the number one overall seed, doesn't take long to get the shot and to break out on top. Well, right from the opening tip, Bree Hall knocking down. Terry Morin, the head coach for Indiana, as Holmes takes the shot. Terry Morin says they don't have a starting five, they have a starting 10. Follow shot good by Sidney Parrish. Well, what a sign already for South Carolina. Bree Hall has struggled at times from the three-point line. Knocks down one to start this ball game, and here's another Tahina Pow Pow. Just what we discussed in the open, the difference. Tahina Pow Pow, you go under the screen. I'm going to show you the bottom of the net. The game plan for this Indiana. The ball up, second team all conference this year for South Carolina. Holmes with the unenviable task of trying to stop Cardoza. North Carolina on the season, averaging their most threes under Don Staley. South Carolina with 10 points in the first couple of minutes. Holmes driving it. Outside shot. Indiana's going to have to hit these. Oh, Sidney Parrish with the terrific box out. And then Scalia hits it. Good box. Oh, Sidney Parrish with the terrific box out. And then Scalia hits it. You know, Don Staley, sometimes they're a little too loose for her. <laughs> right? They have to, 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 to kind of rein them back in a little bit. Parrish. A gut punch, but they were able to recover from that. Good look on the three, and South Carolina with the answer. Makes this year's South Carolina team so different. Their ability to knock down shots, consistent the ball throughout the course of the game. She always seems to hit the big one. That's a tough shot for kids. Clock at 10 for Wiley, gives it up, and they hit it. Another bucket, this one for Raven Johnson. Indiana, a team that likes to run a lot of different sets. So you're going to have to defend multiple actions, and Sarah Scalia, well, the answer for the Hoosiers from Sarah Scalia. But South Carolina, four for five. Here tomorrow. Great hustle by Cardoso to get back into play. And then it results in a Tessa Johnson bucket. How do you like that? It was announced she will come back next year to use her last year of eligibility. And super freshman Malaysia for Wiley. Keep the possession alive by Meister. Now the cut to the basket and another block as the first quarter comes. Here's Scalia driving on Fagan who blocked it. Just when you think you have daylight, it gets dark again. And you think you're by, but you're not. Fake and getting that block. Off the inbounds. Amendola, the freshman. Will McNeil, Scalia, nice pass. Can she beat Full Wiley? Yes, she can. Mackenzie Holmes back in with the two personal fouls, as is Cardozo. Moore McNeil with the three. Gets the lead down to six. It's a 7 0 run. Tessa Johnson quiets down the Indiana faithful. Jerry Moore and talking about Chloe Moore McNeil and McKenzie Holmes. They didn't come in as highly recruited kids. They have been the two most developed players in the history of her program. Moore McNeil with the ball in her hands had a triple double this year against Michigan State, the fourth in the history of IU. There's a three. There's on. Watkins gets it over into the corner. Right back to Ashlyn, who calmly put it into the bucket. Lauren McNeil picked up her dribble. Here's Scalia. Lauren McNeil with Bree Hall on the deck. Hits another three. Hall oh, driving on Holmes. Went for the block and got it. Remember, she's playing with two fouls, so a little risky. And now she's got Cardozo. And you see the change in the on-ball string coverage, but there is no defense for that. Johnson 
Johnson looking for somewhere to go. Cardozo inside to Kitts, who is fouled. And by South Carolina, there's a switch. So now there's a guard that has to try to check Chloe Kitts one on one. Camila Cardozo recognizes it. Chloe Kitts gets an opportunity to get an and one. I mean, Chloe Kitts, 21 points against Presbyterian, a little bit loose with that, with that youth as well. He's had to have some tough conversations with players. Holmes got stuffed by Cardozo. I mean, watch this block by Camila Cardozo on the other end of the floor. She got a Alcom, too tall for Kitts, but Johnson rescues it, puts it up, and in. Even when they seem like it's becoming an empty possession, they get points. Zone backing up on Kitts. Tough shot, and she hit it. Got to be able to answer with scores of your own, but execution for the Gamecocks in the half court has been outstanding, and that possession was no different. 11 points, 5 of 6 from the floor. Nice baseline move by Bree Hall. Get home to touch while you can. Yep, because Cardozo's not on her. McKenzie recognized and finished with her left hand. For Wiley. Cardozo just there to clean it up. Moore McNeil couldn't handle it cleanly, and then Cardozo swatted it out of bounds. Alpal just with three points in the first half, but there's so much depth on this team. Watkins inside hits it. Ashley Watkins had two early fouls and sat a majority of that first in the game. Well, not something you typically see from McKenzie Holmes, but because of the matchup with Camila Cardozo, she's open and she needs to take those shots. Now Holmes takes it away. Holmes was just bowled over Cardozo with a no obstruction Cardozo. after that. Being pick and pop situations to, to try to get some openings because she's not going to get a one on one on the block. That's a tough look for Scalia. Rebounds her own miss and rolls it in. Had the same issue with her knee. It's, it's a problem that she's been dealing with throughout her career. And there's another three by Raven Johnson. To the Elite Eight. Happy retirement, by the way, Katie Martin. Yes. We're going to miss you. That is in and a chance for a four-point play for Garzone. Ashlyn Watkins commits the foul. Her family that are in that conflict zone, her teammates are keeping her focused and grounded. They're there for her when she needs them, but this is a very trying time for her as she worries about her loved ones in Israel. Terry, in Israel, as soon as you graduate high school, you're required to serve military time, so she is constantly in tune with what's going on with her family and friends back home. That's just the second field goal for Holmes. Underneath, that's a terrific look. Bree Hall with another unselfish play. Cardozo gets around Cardozo. And then Parrish knocks one home from the top of the circle. Next opportunity to get a one-on-one -on -one with Watkins. And Holmes looks a little gassed right now. Parrish! The ball for Hall, rebounded by Parrish. Parrish has scored the last eight points now for the Hoosiers. It's the best way to get better, right? Go out on your own and, and practice and be creative. Good hesitation by Garzon. It hit a couple during this run. Well, Indiana doing a much better job on the defensive end of the floor, being disruptive. But there's Pow Pow, right? It seems like every time her team needs a bucket or to stop momentum. Inside, they go to Fagan. Wow, what a one-two punch. Clock in the single digits now for Moore McNeil. Backs up over Cardozo and hits the three. Mackenzie Holmes. Oh, it's Cardozo, then Fagan. And Cardozo called for the foul going over the back of Bargasson. Goes to her left, puts it high off 
the glass to avoid Cardozo. The screen, Dare Zone goes around everybody. Cardozo blocks it, and then a foul on the rebound attempt on South Carolina. Yeah, you got to try to get out in transition if you're Indiana. Scalia to Holmes. Throws it up with the left hand. A little rainbow hook. Now she comes up to set a screen. Parrish for three. In a 20 to four run. South Carolina still not able to get Cardoso. They finally get it to her down low. Every time. Yep. They did go away from that. Well, there's nobody that can guard her. You, you got to keep getting her touches. She doesn't have to shoot it every time. As Carzone gets the nice belt. But that forces the defense to collapse. Watch a pin in. Nice swim move there by the freshman, Tessa Johnson. And it's taken away on the baseline by Scalia. Five on four right now momentarily for Indiana. Parrish for three. Raven Johnson dribbling in and rolls in a tough one. Raven Johnson doesn't take a lot of shots. And off screens over Cardozo. Nothing but net for Sarah Scalia. Dawn Staley letting her team play on. Now they go into Cardozo. Every time. She needs to get a touch every single time down the floor. Scalia. And Neil Cardozo knocked away momentarily, but that gave Holmes a clear path. The arena erupting. I mean, not the best angle for that pass. Cardozo on the high side, but the deflection actually took her out of position and got McKenzie Holmes probably the easiest bucket she's had the entire ball game. And Pam, it's been offensive execution for Indiana. Again, lead the nation. Raven Johnson Good looking team. for someone. Yeah, Watkins just broke free. Cardozo back out. Johnson for three. Huge. Or McNeil over to Holmes, who hits a tough runner. Or McNeil over to Scalia. How'd it go? Uh, Cardozo's out on her. We don't have time for this. Scalia misses, rebound. Scalia, Watkins grabs it as time expires. And the South Carolina Gamecocks escape with a 79-75 win. They're going to the Elite Eight for the fourth straight time.